I bought this awesome painting for my wife from somebody on Etsy. And the painting itself, printed on canvas, cost about $50, and the artist was charging an additional $60 or $70 to have it professionally stretched on gallery stretcher bars. And that's what this video is all about. How I made these gallery stretcher bars and how I stretched the canvas on it. And without further ado, here it is. The first thing I needed to do was measure the actual printed part of the canvas. I wanted to wrap all the white stuff around the actual gallery stretcher bars. And then I measured about an inch more than I needed on the poplar I was using just because I knew I would uh, waste a little bit when I cut my angles with the miter. Um, but right here I'm just cutting them to length before I take them to the table saw. About one by four poplar, so they're about three and a half inches wide. So I measured about the center mark and set my fence to cut the wood straight down the middle so I could have uh, top and bottom and left and right that matched. When I cut through I knew that I wasn't going to get an exact center cut um, so I ran the tallest piece back through so then I would have two identically even pieces. I wanted about a 30 degree cut on one face of each piece of the stretcher bar and that's so the actual canvas isn't touching any part of wood except for the very edges where it needs to stretch over. And then I took all the pieces back over to the miter saw for the 45 degree cuts from each corner of the pieces. I did a quick dry assembly just to make sure all the pieces fit and wrapped the frame up in some ratchet straps that I was going to use for my makeshift clamp. Then I added glue to all the corners and tightened the strap and that worked really well as a makeshift clamp. I measured corner to corner to make sure that they were the same distance to test for square. And then I let it dry for a little while, flipped it over, and used my staple gun to staple the pieces together as just extra reinforcement. Once all the glue had dried, I removed the straps and gave the piece a quick sanding. Basically, you want to sand this to remove all the corners because you don't want the sharp edges of the wood to cut into your canvas. And I made sure to lay down a soft blanket to work with the actual print. And then I just checked to make sure that it was even on all sides before I started the actual stretching process. And basically when you're stretching you start from the middle and you just fold it over and tack it down with a staple gun. Once the first side is stapled in you want to stretch as hard as you can and do the opposite side and move on to the middle part of the sides doing the same thing. Do one and then stretch as hard as you can to do the opposite side. Once you get the first staple on all the bars then you move to the original starting bar and do one on each side of the original staple and then mirror that same thing on each of the bars. Again you want to pull as hard as you can and try to pull not only up but out and away from the center. I found this to be somewhat difficult because this canvas was already conditioned and it was very hard to stretch with just my hands. Thank you. 
when you get to the corners you have to fold it in a special way to get a flush crease right on the edge. There's basically two folds you have to make. There's a smaller fold on the inside and then a larger fold that covers the smaller fold. You should get a pretty good idea of what those folds will look like with the next few corners that I show. And of course you make sure that that corner is taut and finish it off with a couple staples. It was much easier to do on my fourth try. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about making these stretcher bars. Um, this wood I used was just popular that I bought from Lowe's and it is definitely a lot cheaper to do it yourself than it is to spend the 60 or $70 it was to have it professionally made. Of course, this was the first time I've done it so there are parts of it that, you know, it's not as tight as it could have been, um, but you don't see that stuff anyway because it's hanging on the wall. I think it came up great and my wife loves it. We actually have this hanging next to our uh, bed in our bedroom. If anyone's interested, the artist who actually did this is named David Pollitt and uh, I'll put a link to his Etsy store in the description of this video so you can check out his other work. He has some really cool stuff, Ghostbusters stuff, Mario Brothers, more Doctor Who stuff. It's Really interesting stuff. I really enjoy his work. I might buy some more of it later and gallery wrap it myself because it's a lot easier and saves a ton of money. If you enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe below and check me out on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. If you have any questions, ask me on those networks or hit me up on my website. There's a contact form there. Thanks again, guys. I really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a good day. Bye. Here's some really cool stuff, not